everybody, it's Steph Davis here from FlipThisWholesaler.net. I have another reader mail question for you guys this evening. Um, this question came from my Facebook, um, I flipped this wholesaler Facebook wall uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, this question is from Ramel, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, I apologize. Um, uh, the question is, if I find a buyer for a property that two other wholesalers have under contract, what form of paperwork can I produce to document the agreement of the split? I want my name to be on the HUD, and I don't want them to steal my buyer. All right, so um, this is a question that I get asked quite often. Uh, basically, if you're you know selling a deal, you have a um, you're selling a deal for another wholesaler, you you find an end buyer for it. What kind of paperwork? How do you set that up? And then now his second question is, how do you prevent the wholesaler and the end buyer from doing business in the future? Um, so first, I'll answer the the question about the paperwork, how you structure the deal. Um, let's just say that um, actually there's two different scenarios. One, because the paperwork is going to be different if you are dealing with a bank-owned property um, or any property that where you can't assign the contract. Okay, um, so first we'll start out and we'll just assume that the um, the wholesalers have the property under contract with a private seller um, and they can assign the contract. Okay, so um, let's just say in this example that um, the wholesalers have it under contract with a private seller for fifty thousand dollars and they're asking sixty thousand dollars and you find a buyer for sixty five thousand dollars. So um, what you would do is uh, what's called a double assignment and basically the other wholesaler is just going to assign the contract to you using an assignment of contract agreement and then you're going to assign it to your end buyer using another assignment of contract agreement all right so um, like I said the wholesalers have it under contract for 60 uh, they're selling it to you for um, I'm sorry they have it under contract for 50 they're selling it to you for 60 so what they would do is um, you and the wholesalers would um, write up an assignment of contract agreement with them assigning that purchase and sale contract to you for ten thousand dollars okay so the, their their fee would be ten thousand dollars then you're gonna uh, write up a separate a different assignment of contract agreement where you are assigning uh, that purchase and sale contract to your end buyer uh, for your fee of five thousand dollars okay so the total is the purchase price is fifty uh, you're assigning it to, um, or I'm sorry, the wholesalers are assigning it to you for ten thousand dollars, so that's sixty, and then you're assigning it to your end buyer for five, which is sixty-five. So your end buyer's purchase price is sixty-five thousand dollars. They're going to show up the um, day of closing with sixty-five thousand um, dollars. The sellers are going to get their fifty. The uh, wholesaler is going to get their ten, and you're going to get your five. Okay, so uh, it's called a double assignment. So the the paperwork that you would need would be a um, uh, assignment, uh, assignment of contract with the wholesalers and then another assignment of contract uh, with your end buyer okay um, and that'll all be on the HUD so you don't need to worry about any you know funny business going on it's all on um, the title company is gonna have all the paperwork and and you'll be sure that you get your um, your fee at closing uh, the other scenario would be if you are uh, say that the wholesalers have the property under contract with the bank and banks, as you know, or if you don't know, I will tell you, they um, most of them will not allow you, um, if you know, if you put a property under contract with the bank, they won't allow you to assign it. Um, so what you would do in this instance is um, you would have the um, uh, wholesalers, you would write up a purchase and sale contract, a new purchase and sale contract between you and the other wholesalers. Uh, you're going to be the buyer and they're going to be the seller. Okay, and they're selling it to you for uh, sixty thousand dollars. Okay, so they had the initial um, purchase and uh, yeah purchase and sale contract with the bank, them buying it from the bank for fifty, and then they're going to um, execute a, a separate, a brand new because there's going to be two closings going on. Okay, so um, you and the wholesalers are going to sign a purchase and sale contract. You as the buyer, them as the seller, uh, with a, pur a purchase price of sixty thousand dollars. And then what you can do is then assign that contract, that second contract, uh, to your end buyer for $5,000. Okay, so in this instance, instead of two assignment contracts, um, there's going to be a purchase and sale contract and an assignment contract. Okay, so, um, and a lot of people get confused um, about that um, 
process because they say, well, wait a minute, I thought that you can't assign uh, a contract if you have some, or uh, I thought that you can't assign an REO contract. Well, you aren't assigning that first um, contract. The contract the wholesalers have with the bank, that's not being assigned. Okay, The wholesalers are actually going to close on that, and then there's going to be the second transaction of uh, your end buyer purchasing it from the wholesalers. That's the contract that's being assigned. Okay, you're assigning that to your end buyer. All right. So um, as far as um, worrying about or, or finding a way to get, you know, to keep your end buyer from ever doing business with the other wholesalers, uh, I know there's some people who use like non-compete agreements and they have the other wholesalers sign it. I personally, uh, I don't really worry about that. I mean, there's buyers are a dime a dozen. They really are. Um, there's a ton of cash buyers in the market. There's always going to be. If you're constantly, you know, cultivating your list and always adding buyers to your list, um, it's it's really not even a big deal if, you know, say the wholesaler does sell them something down the road. So um, I personally don't concern myself with that. Um, you know, it's public record anyway. The you know, if people want to go steal your buyers, they can. They can just look it up in public record or do a little bit of investigative work, and it's not hard to find out who is you know who the wholesalers are selling to. So, um, I personally don't have you know have any paperwork that I sign with other wholesalers saying that you can't do business with my buyer. Um, that's certainly something if you were that concerned about it. Uh, that you could do. Uh, my viewpoint on it is just, you know, there's there's plenty of fish in the sea. There's plenty of buyers out there, so I don't even concern myself with it. So, um, if you guys have any questions about anything I talked about in uh, in the video, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll be happy to answer it for you. So, you guys, have a great evening, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.